You're watching Greater Brockton, Mark Lindy, your host, and today we are bringing candidates for City Council in Ward 3, and we'll be covering all the campaigns and all the elections up through the preliminary election on September 19th. I have a new face running for office for the first time, Tina Cardoso. Tina, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. You got uh, colorful posters. They were out at the Cape Verdean Festival, seen a few around over at the fairgrounds. Yes. And... Uh, New role for you. Yes, and what, it's exciting. <laughs> what prompted you to run? So uh, I think we ran into each other a couple times, Mark, out in the community. I've been a member of Brockton Promise for a little bit, doing mm -hmm. some work with them, helping the youth in our city. And about a year ago, I started Criados Unidas, K Verdean Women United, trying to empower K Verdean women to come out in the community and be more involved in the community, and also trying to educate the community around issues that affect our community, such as mental illness, uh, suicide, domestic violence, youth violence. Those are all big issues with a lot of stigma in the K Verdean culture and other cultures as well. Mm -hmm. So in doing so, I saw the need for more of um, women like myself to get involved uh, in politics and in policy change. And that's what prompted me to want to run to, uh, for city council. Um, it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are getting involved. Brockton's moving in all sorts of positive direction. And people want to be involved. They want to be included and they want to know what's going on and how can we fix it if it needs to be fixed together. So as you're out there talking to the residents of Ward 3, I'm sure, you know, this time of year, mm -hmm. everybody's out going door to door, knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. You had to get signatures to get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, what are you hearing from the constituents, the residents of Ward 3? Mm -hmm. Most of what I'm hearing is that they, a lot of folks don't know who their city councilor is, and uh, their city council is not visible. Um, who is he? What's going on? What are some of the issues? And sometimes when you actually bring up issues that are in their own ward, they're not familiar. So um, that's been the biggest issue mostly around that. And of course, education, mm -hmm. public safety, those are always hot topics in any ward. Okay, so I'm asking all the challengers that are running against the incumbents that mm -hmm. are there, what would you do differently and why are you... I'm not going to, I don't want to put words in your mouth and say a better candidate, but mm -hmm. why should they pick you over the current counselor that's there? Because of my experiences in the community, because of um, the work that I've done with my nonprofit, being visible, being out there, talking to people, I would bring in a new approach to, to city council where I'd be more visible in the community, bring information to folks. Um, so that they are aware of what's going on. Not everyone is aware. Not everyone's uh, reading the enterprise or watching TV or it, with the language barrier, a lot of them don't understand. Um, so I would be that person, that candidate that would be more visible in the ward and bring information to my constituents. How would you communicate if you got elected as a counselor? I know you, with, with your organization, you have to do a lot of social media. Mm -hmm. Any type of things you would employ to communicate with your constituents two-way? Because as you know, you go to council, and you can only go to council. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to the council. You're not, there's mm -hmm. no hearing of visitors at the city council like there is at the school committee. Mm -hmm. So how would you offer communication if you got elected? Well, social media is important, but I think going to where people are, churches, community centers, adult learning centers, the schools, going to where you already have, that's what the model that I use in my nonprofit is as opposed to having people come to me, I go to them. Mm -hmm. You already have the audience, they're already there, you bring them the information, and they appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so social events, just like today, we went to uh, Brockton High with the council of aging, they had a luncheon. It's my favorite event. Wasn't that awesome? That it was really going nice. Long before I ever got elected, because we cover it. Right. But they're the nicest people. Nicest people. They appreciate that you're there. You give them any little thing, and they're appreciative. Thank you. Um, it could be a piece of candy, and they're they're happy just to see you and talk to you. Mm. So I think going to senior centers, going to senior events, going to where you already have an audience, especially for people who don't have access to social media. Like I 
I said again, with the language um, barriers in some communities, in some of the precinct, we have a large um, population of immigrants right. who don't necessarily have um, options to go to those events, you know, I mean, uh, to go on social media. So if they're having cultural events in their, in their community, participating, showing mm -hmm. up, being present, I think is important, and people appreciate that. Well, you know if you get elected, you can always do your own TV show on cable. <laughs> Com Council Beauregard is doing a show. Okay. Uh, Michelle Dubois does a, a show. Uh, Register Buckley does a show. Mm -hmm. We have a government channel. That's what it's there for. Yeah. So, And you would have an advantage. You can do it in English and in Creole. Do I have a TV Yes. Face, you Absolutely. think? Absolutely. <laughs> well, my joke, my best friend used to tell me I had a face for radio. So even though I'm doing TV for 33 years, that used to be our joke. Right. But no, people need to see. Um, one, of your, one of your colleagues, one of your uh, probably friends, Moses Rodriguez, uh -huh. he says when people see a familiar face, they feel more comfortable with it. And we've person. been on his um, program. Right. And we're so blessed here in Brockton to have these programs and to have the radio programs and that uh, these programs have us come on and they let us express our views. And I think it's an awesome way. We've been using it with Criolas Unidas, and I'd like to do that more if I could. Anytime. Yeah. Soon as... Once the campaign's over, you can have all the time you want. During the campaign, we kind of limit people's appearance. But you have other people that work in the organization with you, too. Yes. We, that's what we do. Greater Brockton right now, I'm giving it up mm -hmm. from promoting all the nonprofits for about three weeks so I can promote all the, the candidates, candidates and let everybody on TV. Because I think people need to be educated. Right. If they don't know you, if they don't know your face, they need to know you. The counselors are on every Monday night. Right. The challengers are on every Monday night. So we want to make sure that they all get on TV so people will know who they are. And we appreciate that. Now, big issue going on right now in Ward 3. Mm -hmm. On West Chestnut Street, on the brockton West Bridgewater line, there's a proposed development mm -hmm. that's going over there, or they want to go over there. And most of the housings in West Bridgewater, and I think three or four of the houses are going to be in Brockton, but they want to open it up on the Brockton side. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a lot of neighborhood opposition to that. Mm -hmm. There's lots of traffic on West Chestnut Street. Where do you stand on that? I've heard about this issue, and I've been talking to people, and some people oppose it, and other people, like I said, they don't have the information. Mm -hmm. So I would like to be able to present them with the information. There's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of folks, I feel, formulate an opinion on a cer certain issue based on what they hear mm -hmm. from other folks or on TV or this. I'd like to sit down with the council or with whoever's involved in the project and come up with, you know, what are the pros and cons and mm -hmm. present it to the ward and let them decide, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that that's what we need to do more of. Public safety is an mm -hmm. issue. Um, Ward 3 borders uh, part of, not the downtown area per mm -hmm. se, but the Campello part of Ward 3 that hits Ward 3. Mm -hmm. uh, Brockton, crimes up, crimes down. Right. What are you hearing from the people out there? People, they feel safe? Are they mm -hmm. worried? What are you hearing? Well, more recently, people have felt unsafe because we've had like a, a rise in crime. We were feeling pretty good a lot of folks up until the recent, but I think it's cyclical and I think it happens. I grew up in Dorchester where we would have years, you know, a couple years with nothing and then we'd have a year where it was just horrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been in Brockton 15 years. I've seen good, I've seen bad. And I think we're going through this bump where we have a rise in the crime. Uh, our officers are doing the best job that they can do. We can't compromise public safety, unfortunately, because it's the times that we live in. So we really have to find a way to make sure that we're safe and that we're able to pay to, to continue to be safe. So Now, the city has a kind of dual form of government. Mm -hmm. You have a mayor, you have a city council. Um, what do you think the relationship needs to be between the mayor and the city council, okay? Um, I missed, for the first time ever, this year's Cape Verdean Festival. I've been to every other one. <laughs> it was I had, awesome. I went away and I had, I, I got, a, I was able to take some um, courses that mm -hmm. I didn't have to pay for, so I missed it. <laughs> but I missed the festival. Uh -huh. um, my understanding is you had a lot of support at that festival from the mayor. Mm -hmm. So do you think that would be helpful if you got elected? Mm -hmm. I think that we need to work with our mayor. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to have, I envision a more harmonious relationship with our mayor, where we're able to stop the 
bickering and the button heads and just sit down and come up with real solutions for the city. And in order to do that, we have to understand each other's point of views and we have to listen to each other. We have to listen to our constituents, see what they want, and be open-minded. So, or we're not going to get anything done. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think it'll help. Um, I hope it'll help. <laughs> if, if you look, there are certain, I mean, there's, there's, there's sides. There's sides, okay? absolutely. And, and, and I'm on a 10-member school committee. Mm -hmm. I don't always agree with my colleagues. Right. Every once in a while we disagree, but we try not to be disagreeable. We try not to make it personal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what ends up in the paper, and it, right. it gets a, it gets well, a little crazy. Well, that's what I said about misinformation. A mm -hmm. lot of people are misinformed of how things run. Of course, I won't get the real view until I'm in there. Mm -hmm. um, but in my opinion, I think that we have to always have the people's best interest at heart, and we have to be able to work together for the people. But before I forget, I want to make sure people know how to get in touch with you. And I'm mm -hmm. going to leave a couple of minutes at the end so you can address the voters directly. Phone number, website, email. Mm -hmm. How do you want people to get in touch with you? They can always call me. I'm on Facebook at Cardoza Committee. That's the name of my page on Facebook. Um, Tina Cardoso at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Or they can call me at 774-257-0951. That's my personal phone number, and I'm available. If, they, if you can't reach me, leave a message, and I will get back to you. Okay. Now, I don't know what I have for time left. I think I'm probably close to three. Three. Okay. I want to give up to two for you mm -hmm. to talk to the voters directly. Forget I'm here. <laughs> Look at the camera. I'm invisible. My name is Tina Cardoso. Like I said, I've been in Brockton for about 15 years. I raised three beautiful kids here at Brockton. They all went to Brockton High School. I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for about 20 years. I have experience working in underserved communities. I've been with Boston Medical Center for a number of years. My kids, the oldest is getting her PhD in psychology. My middle child has a master's in education. She's a teacher in Boston. And my youngest just went to UMass Amherst. Brockton afforded me those opportunities as a single mom. I was a very young teenage mom, a high school dropout, if you can believe it, that went back to school and got my education and raised three beautiful kids practically on my own. Brockton afforded me that with the close-knit community that we have here and all of the opportunities that we have here. So I started my nonprofit to give back to Brockton, and I'm running for office to give a little bit back to Brockton as well. So vote for me in September, September 19th, and in November. Thank you, Mark, for having me. You're welcome, and we'll have you back. We're working on a debate, so all the candidates that are running in your ward, we have three contested council races, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. Right Thank now. you. Okay, so I appreciate we'll have it. you back. Thanks, Pleasure. Tina. Thank you. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates for mayor, council at large, city council, and school committee in the upcoming weeks leading into the preliminary election on September 19th. But remember, don't sit home. Get out and vote. Preliminary election turnout is crucial because you might think that someone you're supporting is going to go to November you got to show up and vote for them if they're going to go to November. Absolutely. So definitely get out the vote, and we'll see you on BCA channels 9, 12, and 98. Good night. Thank you.